Hello there. Thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and what a striking poster from the 1950s rock and roll poster that's uh, much bigger than Chuck Berry himself because it has a segregation line on it. I'll show you a little bit closer up, but it's just... Look at, look at Chuck's name. It's just astonishing with that picture. Boy, is that just red, white, and blue cardboard, you know, boxing-style jumbo 22 by 28 concert poster. And this one's beautifully framed. And uh, it's in Hampton, Virginia is where the show took place. But as you can see above Chuck's name there, pretty much a breathtaking segregation line. Look at that. Making his first appearance on the peninsula for whites. Boy, that's just, you know, chilling. There's really no other way to state it. And this was, um, of course, late 1959, just a couple of months left in rock and roll's first decade. But um, so segregation lines on posters would continue very much into the 1960s. And, of course, uh, by peninsula, they're referring to the Virginia Peninsula, the one with Newport News on it, across the bay from Norfolk. So, you know, the segregated show like this, or I should say with a show like this for whites, does that mean it was a segregated show, or does that mean it was for whites only? Hmm, I don't know. I would suspect it was a segregated show and they wouldn't turn away ticket buyers, but they probably have them in separate sections, you know, separated by a rope and things like that. Just really pathetic stuff that uh, you have to sort of learn to you know, live with and not be too bitter about if you're a fan of uh, rock and roll and rhythm and blues in the late 50s into the mid 60s because it's just the way it is, that's for sure. So Chuck was still being very productive, still hitting the top 40. His latest one this summer was back in the USA, hit the top 40 as I said, and um, 20 years later, in fact, Linda Ronstadt would hit the top 20 with her version of Back in the USA. So this is most likely a Globe concert poster, um, but we're not exactly positive because the bottom, the very bottom of it, underneath the all-star cast there, was trimmed off. But it's got all the hallmarks of a Globe, so I am virtually certain that it is. And uh, interestingly, I'm sure you saw the ticket venue information there. Tickets are $1.75 in advance and $2.50 at the door and available at various, you know, locations that sound just really <laughs> kind of fun and cool, like the B&M Drive-In in both Hampton and out on Route 17. I assume that's like A&W Drive-In, something, you know, drive-in for hamburgers and malts, as opposed to a drive-in theater. And then tickets were available at motels in nearby uh, Buckrow and and Yorktown, so um, just, and then it says all the various places, so it's really fun to see where these tickets, sometimes, especially if it's a general admission concert, like I suspect this was, the ticket locales where you can buy them are just really scattered, because the promoters really wanted to get the tickets out as far as possible to make sure that it sold out or came close. So, there you have it, Chuck Berry probably did Johnny Be Good and Maybelline and all his rollover Beethoven and all his big 50s hits, and for the first time, the white fans of rock and roll felt they could safely show up. There's probably a lot of security and stuff like that. It's just really a head shaker when you think about it today. But a remarkable original advertising piece, a totally authentic window card, placard, broadside, whatever you want to call it, for Chuck Berry in the 50s with a jumbo concert poster all to himself. So really a special piece. So hope you enjoyed it today, and uh, we'll see you again soon here. Thanks a lot for dropping by. Bye-bye.